quick intro. I work for Vimeo. I've worked on all sorts of stuff there. Uh, I'm a member of the Video Land Nonprofit Association, and I work on a bunch of open source stuff you guys have probably used. But it doesn't matter. Everything's great. You've got a startup, you're getting videos uploaded, and then you get users. And uh, they don't like making your software work properly. Uh, most are pretty well behaved, they'll upload pretty standard stuff, but uh, there's the long tail of uh, not so friendly users who will you know, try and throw a wrench in your production line. And the ones who upload the worst stuff are usually coincidentally the loudest. Um, but you should still fix these because you will have a much more robust ingest flow because edge cases may seem like superfluous, but in the long run, you'll, you'll benefit a lot from it. Uh, so we're going to start with the obvious ones. Uh, so should be obvious. It's not as much as you'd think that properties can change between frames. A lot of properties can change between frames. Uh, so this is especially annoying when it's live. Uh, so imagine every single frame is a different resolution coming in. And you have to handle this, re-init the encoder every time, that kind of stuff. Not necessarily reconfigure, anyway. Uh, you, I want you to forget the concept of a frame weight. doesn't exist. Uh, frames have a time. You display them at that time for a certain duration. It may add up to a nice frame rate. That's coincidental. Uh, sometimes you'll say, hey, this must, this must be variable frame rate. But uh, no, it just has a really crappy time base. And to compensate for this, the uh, PTS deltas just kind of oscillate by one or two every single, uh, every single frame. And uh, Android's pretty great for this. Uh, I don't know what they do now, but it's like they, they dump the time directly from the camera or something. So it's all over the place. But it happens to kind of sum up to a frame rate over one second. And uh, even if you do have a nice constant frame rate, you may have to play it at a multiple, because Apple really likes to uh, use the mob files as kind of a pseudo project file for NLEs. And uh, you may just think, hey, I'll just pass all, all the timestamps through, and uh, it's the user's problem. But uh, if you have, like, say, a 0 0.04 frame rate slideshow, that matters, because some devices will only seek to when a new frame renders, and it'll only render subtitles when a new frame renders. So if you have 25 second frames, that's not super great for you know, seeking granularity, stuff like that. And uh, sometimes you just don't have timestamps. You have to interpolate them, uh, MPEG TS. And uh, they are not necessarily even in order. So AUG, everyone's favorite format, and again, MPEG TS. Uh, Timestamps are assigned. Don't let anyone tell you different. Uh, but what do you do with the negative timestamp ones? You might think, I'll just drop them, except when you don't. Uh, again, an Apple invention. And uh, you do need sample durations. Uh, so you can't just say display every frame at this time. You need sample durations because if you have a very low frame rate file and the last frame is 25 seconds, users are going to be very angry if you drop that last frame or display it for 40 milliseconds or something. So uh, not every format has for sample durations. Uh, I know there's a technicality here. You can emulate this with uh, block duration. However, early WebM files do not have these, and you can't fix these because you don't have the info for them. And uh, yeah, they won't necessarily even match timestamps. <laughs> You're just screwed at that point. So seeking, just in the presentation prior to me, you want to say maybe chunk up a video, send it to you know n processes. Uh, you could. Not everyone gets nice IMF input. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so seeking, you, you could transcode everything to a mezzanine file first. It's kind of a pain in the ass. You'll get some quality degradation, that kind of stuff. But uh, you could try and seek within the source file. You might not necessarily be able to. Uh, you might have one keyframe. You might have none. none. Uh, you have to sometimes display frames multiple times. Edit lists were probably the number one complaint we had for years. Uh, 
So it, they're virtual timelines. It, there's an entry in the uh, MP4 file that says display frames 0 to 500 and then 300 to 400 after that. So it, it's kind of, it's the legacy of using MOV and MP4 as pseudo project fi file kind of formats. And uh, you may need to fill audio silence. Uh, WMA has kind of approximate timestamps where uh, you have to kind of guess if you need to massage the timestamps and just play the audio or fill audio in. Um, there's no really no specification. You just kind of have to guess what Microsoft did in their decoder. Um, VP8, VP9, AV1, uh, in what I like to call, I can't believe it's not B frames. Uh, they have invisible frames, which they're coded, they can be referenced by other frames, but they're not displayed. And if you're trying to index a file and seek around, that's a big pain in the ass, because they're also not flagged in the container like this, generally. Um, you may need to display multiple video tracks at once. You might have a nice big ProRes track, you think, great, this must be, must be what the video, like the user wants rendered, but no, it's like a you know, 10 by 10 little alpha overlay logo that has a huge bit rate, and the real video is the second H.264 track, and you have to alpha blend them together. It's great. Uh, packet interleaving, you would think it, packets would be interleaved. You would be wrong. Uh, you can have all the video frames followed by all the audio sample data. Uh, this is obviously really great over a network connection, and uh, browsers really love doing those kind of range requests. Uh, they can also be out of order. Again, more range request fun. Bitstream color properties, you can be in the bitstream or in the container. And which one you should use, whether you should use both or not, it depends on context. It's complicated. Sometimes you'll just have an embedded ICC profile. And uh, then stuff gets really fun. Uh, if you do this, I don't like you. This is my favorite quote by uh, MPV player lead developer. Uh, I'm sure you guys have used that. Uh, so some users, they upload, QuickTime can have looping files. So there's a flag in MOV that says, play this file over and over and over again. They upload it and they say, why doesn't it play in a loop on your website? Uh, there's, this is not really easy to reason with them about that. Uh, sometimes it's not even a video codec. You can get to PowerPoint and MOV. Uh, fire, which is an old QuickTime codec that just has a bunch of parameters saying, animate a fire this way. Uh, <laughs> uh, some stuff you get, it's just a dump of VNC draw commands into an AVI file or GDI plus draw commands into an AVI file. And uh, of course, RAR in everything because pirates love RAR. Uh, so this is a particularly fun one. Uh, we had a user that said, hey, when I listen to, when I watch the video on my iPhone, there's no voices. And we were like, what? This user's clearly on drugs or something. But no, sure enough, we listened to it on, it was perfectly fine on desktop, on a laptop, on you know, this old iPhone, no voices. Uh, so it turns out some editors, when you want to overlay like a voiceover track, it'll actually generate each, uh, each channel will be exactly 180 degrees at a phase. So, uh, and it turns out that iPhone had a mono speaker. So when it down mixed them, the voices went away. Um, that was a great use of time. This one, uh, if you're old enough, you may remember this. Uh, back in the, the, the golden age of uh, codecs in the 90s. Uh, MPEG-2, MPEG-4 ASP, I should, should have added that on there, uh, their DCT and IDC are not specified to be bit exact. So if your encoder did not match the implementation in the decoder, you could get like a slight orange, purple, not sorry, not orange, purple or green tint. And that would just get worse with more, more P-frames because the error compounds over the interpredictions. And uh, so the result is, I hope you can see it on there, there's kind of weird, tingy, green, purple artifacts. Um, and over the course of, say, 200 p-frames, that gets really noticeable. And it's impossible to fix this. This is why some players let you select your IDCT algorithm where they go, I swear by libmpeg2, it feels warmer when I watch it. And, uh, 
yeah. If a user complains about this, nothing you can do. And lastly, the point is really don't just trust one tool because, for example, in AV format, everything is MP3 all the time. ELF files are MP3s, JPEGs are MP3s. Um, use auxiliary data to verify everything. Uh, and this is just a dump of tools that may be useful for inspecting various rubbish that users might upload. Uh, that's the end. Thank you.